Oh, hey there. The theme of our video today is snow sea, but it ain't what you think. Plum blossoms are poetically called a snow sea or snow lake, but why snow? For one thing, the clusters of small and often light colored flowers probably remind people of uh, branches blanketed in fluffs of snow. For another, plum blossom blooms during the onset of spring when most other flowers have yet to open since it's still really cold, and when branches could still be uh, covered in snow. The classic dream of the Red Chamber even describes a steeping tea using water from snow on plum blossoms uh, found at a fictitious temple uh, that is supposedly based on a real one near here. Hence, the plum blossom together with bamboo and pine are jointly referred to as the three friends of winter. The plum blossom is known to withstand harsh wintry weather uh, as described in countless literatures since centuries ago. Since then, it has become a symbol of perseverance. Furthermore, since the plum blossom often opens around spring festival, it is sometimes regarded as a herald of spring and a sign that the worst of winter has passed. For this reason, in Japan, where plum blossoms are also abundant, the Ume Matsuri Plum Festival is held around now to celebrate the arrival of warmer weather, uh, good health, etc. However, I should emphasize that while the plum blossom is widely found in Japan, the term Japanese plum is a misnomer because the flower originates here in China. Even Japanese researchers have stated the fact that the Prunus Mume had its origin in South China around the Yangtze River. South China around the Yangtze, that's where I am. Many of our country's greatest places to see the plum blossom are in the Jiangnan region, and one of the most acclaimed spots is right here, Xiangshui Hai, literally fragrant snow sea. Yeah, no, you can't see the fragrance. You just have to trust me on that one. But surely you can imagine the snow sea. It will get really snowy in about two weeks when the blossom really hits its peak. But if you've enjoyed the snow so far, hit that like. Another thing to see here is the Mei Hua Ting behind me, literally Plum Blossom Pavilion. It is full of Mei Hua inspired elements. Even the crane statue on the top of the roof stands for the idiom Mei Qi He Zi, literally Plumber's Wife, Crane's Kid referring to a hermetic way of life close to nature. The structure is also notable as an example of architecture by the Xiangshan faction of artisans based in the nearby Xiangshan area. The Xiangshan school is purportedly a part of the UNESCO intangible cultural heritage of traditional Chinese timber framed structures. We didn't see enough snow at that snow sea, so we're heading from one Xiangshu high to another, but it also ain't what you think. Let's go check it out. See that snow we see up there? It has the same name as the scenic zone, Xiangshu high, but I think the two are unrelated. Snowy Sea restaurant has a couple branches across Suzhou, but I chose this branch because it is located on Yinchun Road, literally spring embracing road, and we too shall embrace spring tonight.
first and foremost is the squirrel fish. We order this Suzhou gastronomic emblem all the time. Um, its ingredient, the mandarin fish, is a uh, rather common commercial species, so it's available year round. But traditionally, the fish is fattest uh, in spring, albeit a little later when the peach blossoms bloom. There is even a folk song that advises um, eating the mandarin fish um, during the second month of the traditional Chinese calendar. Right now, it's the first month, and it is prime time for another fish, the dark sleeper. During other times, um, the benthic dark sleepers are hard to spot because they stick close to um, uh, lake beds and river beds. But come springtime, uh, when prey in the water become more copious, the dark sleepers emerge from the dark corners to feed. However, um, some gastronomes and experts uh, also believe that the dark sleeper is best a little later as well, uh, when the rapeseed flowers open and when spring bamboo shoots sprout. But whatever the best timing, this is already very tasty, uh, as tasty as it is ugly. So dark sleeper is closely related to the uh, marble gobi, which is also ugly but tasty. Don't miss a little tidbits um, around the head. There are these little like broad bean shaped little jams. They are the best parts of the fish. The dark sleeper um, could be steamed with eggs like they do here. Um, or red braising, that is also a very common method, and um, also cooked with the vegetable water shield. But based on my experience, the dark sleeper is a little rarer than the uh, mandarin fish, um, which is why I didn't talk much about the dish uh, squirrel fish today. Um, when feasible, come see the real beautiful China, and if you come to Suzhou uh, in spring, um, try the dark sleeper if it is available. But if not, the mandarin fish wouldn't disappoint you either. 再见! <laughs>